Learn all about centrally managed Azure hybrid benefit for SQL Server this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today we're bringing Chris back. Uh, Chris has actually been on the show before, maybe years ago, uh, but we're really excited to have you back on the show. And today we're going to be talking about some new things and some existing things around Azure Hybrid Benefit. Now, let's just get right into it. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what is Azure Hybrid Benefit and how do people take advantage of it today? Sure. Uh, Azure Hybrid Benefit is a cost savings benefit and also a migration benefit. And any customers that have existing Windows Server and SQL Server licenses with Software Assurance, or maybe they have a subscription, they're eligible for this benefit. And it gives them some cost savings, as well as the ability to kind of migrate into Azure. As you can see that picture here, um, the way it works is uh, when a customer applies their licenses uh, with Software Assurance or subscription uh, to Azure, that part of the Azure bill actually ends up getting zeroed out. And so it's it's a cost savings on the Azure bill in that way. And the cost per year um, is generally lower um, with software assurance or subscription. So they're saving money that way. Nice, that's pretty cool. Now, from what I understand, there's a new centralized Azure hybrid benefit. How's that different? Yeah, so I think a good place to start is kind of how it works today. So today, um, or originally, whenever a customer wanted to use Azure Hybrid Benefit, uh, they needed to go to an individual virtual machine or other Azure resource like a SQL database, and they would select the benefit on each individual resource. And that actually had some limitations. Um, you know, think about a customer that might have tens of thousands of virtual machines and other resources. That's pretty cumbersome to have to manage that resource by resource by resource. And also, uh, this was put in the hands of, uh, you know, DevOps roles uh, rather than uh, higher level administrator roles. And so there were concerns that, that customers had about being able to keep track of it, make sure they were staying compliant. Um, and so, what we did uh, was we listened to that feedback and we came up with a centralized way um, to do this. Um, you know, the, the way this works is customers can assign larger blocks of licenses um, and they can do that at an overall account level. So their whole billing account, they get assigned 10,000 SQL Server Enterprise licenses at their overall account level. Um, or they can do it as, at a subscription level if they need kind of a little bit more granularity, but not all the way down to a resource level. Um, one important thing uh, to add, so we've got this for SQL Server. Um, we do intend to add this for Windows Server in the future, but we don't have it yet. So that is something that we intend to add, but at least for SQL Server right now, we feel like this is a much better experience. Um, and it's also just better um, you know, from the perspective of just keeping control and, and, and watching over your use of uh, licenses within Azure. Yeah, no, it's awesome that we're kind of bringing this to one place, making it easier for everyone to do and making it more visible for mm -hmm. the, the appropriate roles. Now, I'd love to see kind of how this looks, if you have anything. Absolutely. So um, what I'm gonna do is, first I'm gonna start with um, you know, kind of how uh, you navigate uh, within the portal, one of the feedbacks, uh, areas of feedback that we've gotten is that um, it's not necessarily the, the easiest to always find. You know, there's a lot of stuff in Azure. And so for starting with navigation first, um, and then we'll go into kind of how the experience works. So, um, you know, first, uh, you know, you navigate to this, uh, you, you log into the Azure portal and you go into cost management and billing. Um, and then you click on billing scopes. Um, you can see that on the left-hand side. Um, and then once you're in there, um, you click on reservations plus hybrid benefit on the left nav bar, and then add Azure hybrid benefit up on the top. And that says preview now. We're actually out of preview. We're into a general availability now. So that's changed uh, from this screenshot, but that's how you get there. And then um, you'll land on this screen. Now, um, one thing I, I want to point out is uh, this is limited uh, to higher level admins, as I mentioned earlier. And so, you know, if you are in an enterprise agreement, um, 
you are going to need to be an enterprise administrator with right access to actually get in here. And so if you don't have that level of access, but you want to use this capability, uh, you'll need to work within your organization uh, to find out, you know, how to get um, granted those permissions. So you're going to land on this page and, um, you know, you, first you're going to see some information in blue here that says, you know, you need to do this SQL um, you need to register your SQL, uh, self-installed SQL Server virtual machines. And so there's a process you go through. There's a link that explains how that works. All right. So once you've done that, um, then you click on Assign Licenses. And here, then you will land um, on this page. And this is kind of the main page uh, for Centrally Managed Azure Hybrid Benefit. And there's three steps. Um, the first step is to choose the scope. And like I said before, you can do that at the overall account level, or if you check, if you select specific subscription, um, then in that case, um, you will find that you can select from all of the subscriptions that are within the billing account. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, you choose a coverage level. The first one, keep your existing coverage. That is a status quo. And so what that will do is if you've got a bunch of Azure Hybrid Benefit already selected on individual virtual machines and other resources, um, it'll uh, the system will actually add all of that license usage up and it'll tell you how much that equates to. And you can say, do that. And then it'll basically essentially assign that same number of licenses. So it'll have the same amount of coverage. Okay, the next one is you know, if you want to really optimize and you've got plenty of licenses, for example, then the system will tell you, you know, how many licenses would it take to assign to cover everything? That's what the middle option is about. Um, and so it gives you those numbers and, and you can select that option and, and move forward from there. And then the last option is if you want to do something in the middle or if you need to do something different, maybe you don't have as many licenses uh, as, as are needed to cover either of those then you can click on custom assignment and you can just enter um, you know, custom numbers for the number of standard and enterprise core licenses. All right, and then the final thing you do is you choose a review date. And this is a new feature that we've got um, that lets you align your review date, which is more or less an ex expiration date. And that lets you set it in alignment with your enterprise agreement, uh, either renewal date or anniversary date, whatever date makes sense to you or subscription renewal date. So that's that's how that part works. Nice. Yeah. And then um, you can also change the name of your license assignment. And then um, once you've set up these license assignments, you can go here on the main cost management and billing page and write on the same list as your reserved instances. You will see these license assignments with Azure Hybrid Benefit. And you can do the same thing as you do with RIs. You can monitor utilization the last day, the last seven days. Um, you know, the way to think about utilization is um, if it's, you want to keep it around 100%. If it is 100%, then you might be at risk of having some pay go. And so you might want to further inspect what's going on there. If it's a little bit less than 100%, maybe that's right where you want it to be because you know you're covering everything. You're not quite using all of them, but you know you're covering everything. If your utilization is a lot lower than 100%, then you might want to think about kind of re-optimizing how you're assigning your licenses. So uh, I think that's that's what I have for the demo. Awesome, cool. So I guess one final question I have for you, Chris, because I've learned a lot about this. I think I know how to get started. I think I know how to go do this. Like assuming I am the enterprise admin, is there anything else that I should keep in mind as I go get started or like just go start taking advantage of this today? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing is every customer is going to have their own needs. And so um, you should definitely go look at your usage, both on premises and within Azure. Compare that with how much, uh, how many licenses you've purchased. Um, and then, you know, if you need to potentially to uh, purchase some more licenses, let's say to optimize within Azure, then work with your uh, account team to take care of that assuming you're an enterprise customer. If you're a smaller customer, then of course you're just buying direct. Um, but yeah, uh, I would say just uh, l look at your own situation and make sure uh, that you're uh, looking at both on-prem and Azure usage and optimizing across all of that. Awesome, great. Well, Chris, thanks again so much for coming on Data Expose. 
I learned a lot. I think our viewers have learned a lot. Uh, if you are a viewer of this episode, go ahead, give it a like, leave us a comment and let us think, let us know what you think of this new experience. And we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. We hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. <laughs>